In this video we will paint and assemble a six port roundhouse, make all necessary track work and automate the doors using servo motors. Hello and welcome to another video tutorial. This video is really a, a response to a number of different viewer requests I've received over the past six months. Uh, one of them is coming from a Swedish guy called Alexander Ian. Uh, he wants me to show how I paint and finish uh, plastic kits. Uh, so we're doing that. He also wanted me to do some kit bashing. Well, this is not a heavy kit bash, but at least I will uh, motorize and give some inspirational advice on how to motorize roundhouse doors. So that's coming for you. Uh, I also met a guy down on Miniature Wunderland uh, last autumn. Uh, he asked me how to uh, solder on Märklin K-Track. You see, the Märklin K-Track has rails made of stainless steel. And it's really, if you don't have the right stuff and the right method, it's really tricky to, to get anyone, anything to stick onto stainless steel. So this video is a response to that. The kit we're building today is uh, from a German manufacturer called Kibri. Uh, the cool thing with this kit is that it snaps together. Yes, uh, no glue and no trimming, no mold burr, nothing. It's just bang, 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 bang. And perfect fit. So that's pretty amazing. Let's get started. This uh, six port roundhouse consists from two kits from Kibri, item number 39452. One of the ports will have the extension 39454, so we're adding that as well. This roundhouse has brick walls. The brick walls typically have grout in between the bricks and also a quite a great variance in color of different bricks. So what we're going to do here is once we cut away this from the frames, we're going to paint the bricks, some of the bricks in individual colors. So I will put red, yellow and brown on my mixing board and thin that with thinner. So here are the colors and I'm mixing them to get the kind of brick color. So I'm starting off with the brick color and then I'm adding yellow and red so I get variants. This one's now completed. You don't have to paint all of the stones, just a number in each wall so you get the variants. Next thing is to paint the woodworks. I'm doing that with Humboldt 110, which is natural wood. I'm applying this using an airbrush, but hey, it's just as good if you use a normal paintbrush. It does not really matter. When the woodwork has dried, it's time for weathering. This is white and black pastel chalk powder. I'm first applying the white powder using a makeup applicator. I apply it in streaks from top to bottom on all of the doors. The purpose is not to make them white, but to get some variance in the color tone. I then dip a brush in isopropanol and create streaks with this propanol. If you dip often, you fade the white color, and if you dip more seldom, you enhance the whiteness. As soon as the isopropanol has dried off, I add some black powder. I apply that also using a makeup applicator, but mostly on the lower part of the door. So more black the further down you get. I'm using the same routine for the isopropanol after the black powder. And this is what the door looks like when done. Now there's only one thing missing really, that is the actual windows. The windows are cut from their frames and then snapped into place. We're going to do one more thing with the doors before we're ready with them. My intention was to animate the doors using a servo motor like this. We need to glue a piece with a hole in on the hinge, which can host the push rod coming from the servo motor. So I'm making this uh, piece uh, from a piece of scrap plastic from the kit. And I cut it to length and glue it in place like this. And then we're ready with the doors. Now let's go back to those brick walls. 
Now it's time to add the grout. The grout consists from acrylic paint, flat yellow, white and a lot of thinner. I mix typically 50-50 thinner paint. The grout will be mostly white but we're adding a tiny bit of yellow just to make sure that the grout doesn't turn into that bluish electric white. This uh, well thinned acrylic paint will float in between the bricks and look like grout. Excessive amount of the paint is absorbed with the paintbrush. Now rip a piece of your jeans off and soak it into isopropanol. Then fold the piece into a hard pillow. Once the acrylic grout color has been curing and drying for at least 5 or 10 minutes, you can start wiping it off from the surface. Don't put too much pressure on the pillow, it should just wipe off the top surface. And this is what it looks like when in extreme close-up. The last item to weather before assembly is the stone foundation. For this I use a color mix from brown, black and 50-50 with thinner. Time to start the assembly. As said, everything just snaps into place. Assembly goes quick and there's no need for fixtures, tapes, trimming or sanding or anything. Just snap it all together. Very nice. The Ottbergen sign is glued in place using a tiny film of PVA glue. Yeah. With the sign in place we can snap together the front and the side. You see here it's a perfect fit between the two parts. And then continue to snap the parts together. The middle section. And some more front sections here. The port with extension has a joint which replaces the rear wall and from that joint we can snap the other parts in place. I glue the LED modules from Fisman in place which lights up the roundhouse. The automatic doors will be powered by a servo motor. This type of servo motor is low cost and very common in aero modeling, RC control aero modeling. I assemble it into the roundhouse roof using two scrap pieces of plastic. Yeah, works fine. This is what the mechanics look like. The push rod coming from the servo motor is pushing onto a crossbar, which in turn has two push rods pushing on each door's hinge. Now I made my own driver circuit for this servo motor, but I've seen that there are ready-made circuit boards for this in the stores. The doors can then be manually operated using a toggle switch or powered from your train controller or rock rail or whatever you're using to control the traffic on your layout. So when the route gets occupied to that port, the door will open and then when the route is closed, then they will close the doors. A lot of interior and details can be added to a roundhouse like this. In this presentation I stay with only brick walls inside. So I printed out from internet a brick pattern which I just glue on the inside of the walls. So when the door opens you see this uh, brick wall instead of the red plastic. The last action on the roundhouse is to weather the roof. For this I use pastel chalk powder. I use some grey, black and brown. I apply it using a makeup sponge. Same here as with the doors. I apply it in streaks. So I want the roof to be kind of streaky. It looks a bit worrying white at this moment, but we will also add the brown and black. So I start by adding brown under these air vents here. The pastel powder treatment is kind of permanent, but sometimes you want to wipe off some dust. And then it's good to seal this using a dull coat. That's a matte varnish 
mixed with thinner. If you do not have an airbrush, I wouldn't recommend you to paint brush the matte varnish really. Then it's probably better to just let it be. As said, the pastel powder treatment is kind of permanent anyway. Unwanted white corners are fixed using brown wash. Some faded black is added over the doors. I use a makeup applicator for this. You can also use airbrush if you have one. Now we're gonna add some brown burnt umber pastel powder on the sides, the lower parts of the brick wall. Now I want to say something about this because it's really easy to overdo this and actually ruin the entire look. So be gentle with that applicator. The entire local station will be built on plywood. Here I have measured and drawn the location of the roundhouse and cut out the hole for the turntable and then I will add this crash barrier here. I think that's a nice detail. On the other side of the crash barrier is the main line. The attention to prototypic details in this video will be somewhat limited. We will instead focus on the more practical assembly details. The tracks are cut to length using a motor grinder with a saw blade. The burr is trimmed away using a file. This track system from Merklin K-Track has a rail of stainless steel. This type of material requires a special flux to be successfully soldered using a, a soldering iron. I've got many questions on this topic and this is the solution. The flux is supplied using a paintbrush. Heat the rail 3 seconds and then add the tin. Now it's easy to just solder the cable to the rail like this. Since the flux is very corrosive, I remove it using a cotton swab and isopropanol. Alright, now we need to finish the turntable installation before we can glue the tracks going to the roundhouse. I use a sound damping roadbed from Woodland Scenic for the main lines, but the track work in the yard will be glued directly onto the plywood. This while the trains are running very slowly in there, and also if you put cork under the track in the yard, then you have to elevate everything in the yard with the same amount. I'm checking the straightness of the roadbed using a steel scale and that the spacing in between the tracks are according to the standards I'm following. Whilst those are drying, I'm painting the entire area using a brown paint, a light brown paint. This will give a nice foundation for the gravel and the turf we will put on top of this. Alright, next action is to glue those 3mm thick balsa sheets in place which will hold up the concrete floor inside of the roundhouse. I glue them in place using PVA glue. I'm fixing them with pins and then checking with the roundhouse so they do not interfere with the roundhouse. Mm, seems to work fine. Then we're ready to glue the track work in place. I glue that using PVA glue. The tracks are pushed into the glue and then I put a steel scale to check that the tracks are both straight and in line with the turntable. With all the tracks straight I just put some fixing pins to make sure that they stay that way until the glue has cured. I will also have a water tower. So I'm drawing the shape of the tower onto the board. We also need something for the night shift, some illumination. I'm using the Fisman 63841, which is a light mast for yards like this. I drill a 6mm hole, then I push in that snap in connector which the light mast is plugged into. But let's put the included protective cover there instead until we completed the scenery. Next action is to paint some corrosion on the rails. From these three I mix mainly brown and a tiny amount of black to get the color I look for. Now we're ready to glue the concrete floor in place. It's made from 1.5 mm balsa wood which I have painted in a kind of concrete gray color. 
I'm also adding a concrete buffer in the rear. It's time to make that protective barrier. I do that from a 6.4 millimeter thick styrofoam sheet, which I just cut to height and then bend it. Yeah, I put it in place and glue it using PVA glue. I also glue three millimeter balsa spacers in between the tracks to the roundhouse. This is just to avoid using too much gravel, you know, and have to gravel several times in between those tracks. It's better to put the spacer there. The gravel here I'm using is a Woodland Scenic Fine Brown. The glue I'm using is Noch Grass Glue. Same process is used for the main line and ballasting the main lines. I use Noch Grass Glue and then the Woodland Scenic medium brown. I use a flat wide brush to get the ballast where it's supposed to be. With the ballast in place we need to reduce the surface tension of the water. I do that by spraying on isopropanol mixed with water. Then I use an eyedropper to apply the glue water mix. This is 50-50 uh, mix from PVA glue and water. The water tower is also put in place and fixed using a grass glue from Noch. I use a folded piece of paper to be able to sprinkle gravel all the way into the water tower like this. With the gravel in place, I add randomly pattern of grass glue over the gravel area. And then I sprinkle Woodland Scenic Earth Blend onto those glued areas. Now it's time to put some static grass here as well. I use a six millimeter beige grass. I don't want the grass to be too green in such a dry area as a totally graveled yard. The green will instead consist from bushes and a few bushes and a, a a couple of trees which will add to the final scene. So that's how I paint and assemble a plastic kit. Uh, now there is uh, tons and tons of detail which can be added to uh, the scene. Uh, and I would probably continue with that over the coming 12 months, I would guess, if I know myself. Hey, but that's another tutorial. This is uh, just a paint of the plastic kit. So now you got it there. And also how to solder on K-Track. So, if you want to stay tuned to the channel, please hit the subscription button and don't forget to also enter the, the bell. So you have to press on the bell to get notification when a new video is being published on the channel. Until that happens, see ya. This video was brought to you in cooperation with Fisman Modeltechnik.